Hi and welcome to Trial Lines TV. Today, part three of one of our seminar series with Jason Shortus. Today we're going to go through some functional exercises both in strength and flexibility that'll help you in your off season to get you better, more prepared and stronger for the upcoming season. So stay tuned and here's part three with Jason Shortus. So if you grab a chair, you can grab a towel, you can grab a, what do you call it, foam roll. Foam roll is really good. It's like this, hands up nice and tight. All right, you rotate and two. Hold, one, two, three, come up, rotate back. Go around to the other side, rotate, tilt, one, two, three, come up. Now, I'm actually really crap. I've got terrible thoracic mobility. I really do. That's from 20 years of riding, or well, longer than 30 years of riding a bike like this. Okay, so this is one area I need to work on a lot. The reason why you do it this way, you actually lock off your lower part of your body by switching your knees off. So if you can find some way to lock the lower part of your body off, it's literally just forcing it to get some mobility in your thoracic spine and thoracic area. Okay, this is gonna expand your ability to breathe, stop you getting that ache right between your shoulder blades and give you a better opportunity to actually pack your shoulder blades as well. Okay, so it's actually, it's really good stuff. This is something, you get a stressful day at work, go and do this at lunchtime and you feel heaps better after it. Okay? The next thing I'm gonna show you is, we're just gonna do a lower leg stretch as part of our release thing. And everyone's done a hip flexor stretch, yes? Right. Everyone knows that this part, the front part of the body, is the hip flexors, right? So in other words, it does that action, that sort of stuff. Everyone gets really tight through this because you sit there all the time on the bike, or you sit at work, or you sit in the car. So we're going to do this, which is a hip flexor stretch. Big step forward, right? Same arm as the same leg back, goes up nice and high. Go, my hips go down and forward, and I squeeze my butt on and hold it. Does everybody want to have a go at that? You don't necessarily need to use the Reebok box, but this is actually going to help release this off. Right. If you put the further you put the higher you put your leg up, the better it's going to be. Same, yeah, same, the same. So all you want is this structure all the way the front of your body. I'm stretching the whole front of my body, basically is what I'm doing. Okay? And remember, so you go down, forward, squeeze your butt on. Reach up. Also stretches all the nerves running in the front of the body. So it's your upper and bum. Okay, switch over to the other side. Any sort of stretches, any of that sort of stuff, 30 seconds. 30 seconds down to 30. The fact that you're actually moving through range, moving through, you know, full extension is actually really good. Okay. So I'm just checking. No, I have a knee problem. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard when you... The only other way to do it is actually you lie on the edge of the bed and drop your leg down and pull the other leg. And then put your arm up. So you're resting in there. Okay. 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 All right. Then the only other one that I want to do down the, the back of the body is you can do a calf stretch, right? So anyone can, and everybody knows the calf stretch, you need to do it straight leg, you need to do a bent leg, all that sort of stuff. But we're gonna move on to the next step, which is actually to resetting. So the first resetting exercise we're gonna do is everybody can stand up, right? Everybody standing up. Stand on one foot, doesn't matter which foot, close your eyes. And we can 30, one, two, three, Forward, keep the leg up, five, don't hold on anything, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, is everyone still, six? okay. Oh, right, the exercise, what we're doing, switch over to the other side. Okay, other side, close your eyes and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, We've got someone doing yoga. Nine, Where's ten, the tree pose. Ten, eleven, <laughs> twelve. All right. Okay, this is important. The reason why this is important is it talks about, okay, I'm going to use a big word, sorry. It's called proprioception. Oh, right? Of course it is. Of course it's called proprioception. <laughs> and basically what it is, it's your body getting feedback, your brain getting feedback from the rest of your body. All the small muscles that actually hold you upright and stop you from falling over and give you posture and all that sort of stuff. There you go, here's posture, sorry. Okay, so that sort of stuff. So it's all these little muscles that do it, and they basically tell you where in time and space your body sort of sits, right? So you've got all these sensors in your body. Now, if you injure one side of your body, if you roll an ankle, hurt a knee, do that sort of stuff, your body goes, I'm gonna switch it off until you get your shit together, and then I'll switch it back on again when you remind me. But no one ever does the exercises that balance it and switch it back on. You can get better at balance. The better you are at balancing, the less likely you are to get injured and the more likely you are to be able to switch all the good shit on that holds you upright. 
Okay? So this exercise is really, really important. It stops you rolling your ankle, stops you hurting your knee, stops you getting all the things that you can do, and also switches your brain connection on with the rest of your body. Crucial, crucial exercise, proprioception exercise. Okay, the next one we're gonna do as well, sitting down, and it's called, now, remember where I was talking to you about your ITB? Your ITBs come down the outside, and they pull, they attach past your hip, they attach past your knee, and they go to your head of your fibula, and they attach down around here. Okay, they pull your kneecaps across. So people with knee pain often have what they call poor VMO, right? I'm gonna pull this up. So there's a muscle on your body, and its whole job, and I've got the best VMO, I could be a VMO model. Seriously, I could, right? So those bad boys there, those babies, right? That's the reason why I never got any knee injuries, because when I was, when I basically injured my leg, I basically did everything I could to actually switch these on and make them nice and strong. Now everybody's got them, everyone's got really strong muscles, and this muscle just makes the kneecap, I'm gonna use a big word again, track properly. In other words, it goes nice and in the right spot. It doesn't get pulled across there, doesn't cause your knee pain. It literally just pulls it this way and keeps a nice track. The way to switch it on, push your knee into the ground. That's it. Roll your towel up, push your knee down. Hold, oh, one, two, three, release. One, two, three. You cannot do enough of these. As an athlete that spends your time running and on your feet a lot, you cannot do enough of these exercises. So anything that leaves your knee slightly bent, you put your hand underneath and push down your hand, press it down, one, two, three. Again, we're talking about the ability of resetting this mechanism so it actually protects your knees, a protective mechanism. So it stops you getting knee injuries. Okay. So that's that one. Okay, and next exercise that we're going to do, which is a resetting exercise, is... Now, if you've got... Has anyone got like a rubber band at home? Yeah. Is there a band you got from the physio, you got from someone else, you got from swimming, you got from all that sort of stuff? What I want you to do when you go home, put it around your knees, you can actually grab, there's a spare band here, someone can actually try it after we finish today, is this exercise. Now everybody can switch their core on, their transverse abdominis, right? So if you lie on your knee, on your back, with your, on your knees back, if you pull your belly button into your spine, that's switching on what's called, called your TA or transverse abdominis. It's the muscle, the stability muscle that's underneath. Now when they talk about ab strength and core strength now, they talk about Intra-abdominal pressure, another big word, sorry. It means being able to put pressure inside and hold it. So it's pulling your belly button down. Now, if you're a guy, you're probably not gonna know what a pelvic floor exercise is, right? <laughs> Unless, like me, when I was doing physio, you had to teach it for prenatal classes at 22 years of age, which is the scariest <laughs> thing in the world, <laughs> right? So, if you put your belly button in, pull it up towards your head, you're actually switching on your pelvic floor as well, right? The next thing you've got to also switch on is your pelvic stability muscles, like the back here. Squeeze your knees slightly apart against the band and lift off, and you've got all three. So, there, there, and there. Right? This is really important, being able to switch all three of these on at the same time is crucial for when you do your stuff on one leg up here. Right? So if you can actually activate, and you activate and go for a run, you go, oh, actually, I feel so much better, I get much more propulsion, much more strength off, right? Just switching it on. The next step from that is to actually go, so belly button in, belly button up, squeeze out, and lift off. Okay, that's the next step. Then the next step from that is a band around the knees. Anything with a band around the knees switch, switches your, your core, your stabilizers on, pelvic stabilizer. Next step up from here is called the monster walk. Has anyone seen the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so monster walk, right? This. Looks gay, I know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right? I did lots of stuff that made me look gay, but I'm not gay, my boyfriend was. Right? So, like that, okay? So, switching it on. Now the reason why this is a really good exercise, moving forward, is when you're running, you need to be able to switch on your stabilizers before you hit the ground so that holds you upright. So this switches it on before you hit the ground to hold you upright. Okay, wants to walk, forward. Big step forward and out. Forward and out. You want to try, have a go, all right? So that's a sequence of exercise we've got there. All right? Can I just ask, in, in order for these, um, I guess, to really work for us, how long and often should we be doing these exercises? 
It's like anything. If you do it, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And it's a skill, basically. So if you could do it, say, two, three times a week initially to start off with, twice a week, one morning, one morning. And how long would you do these monster walks for? Monster walks, I would do probably five times the length of the room. It would take about probably five minutes. Um, what I've, I've worked with guys that, that have had injuries from running and they, have, they just can't seem to switch their glutes on. You know, people go, I just can't activate, can't activate. If they do that and then go for a run, they're just like, holy shit, I've got it, I get it. It's about reminding your body that you've got to actually do it. It's switching it on. So I used, to do, I used to do gyms, when I was going good, I used to do gym sessions and literally run off it and I'd feel a million bucks because I was actually switching, switching it on. And I, was, you know, I was switching, activating everything. So all my core stabilising muscles were all switched on and I would run so much better off it. The next day I'd feel like I was rooted, but it worked really well for running it. Got one session. Okay. So that's your core stabilising muscles. I'm going to do something to do with the shoulder now. Right? So I'm actually going backwards. And we talked about being able to pack your shoulder and being able to control your scapula, your shoulder blade. Right? The best way to learn how to do that, there, and I'm going to try and put my shoulder blade in my opposite back pocket. Cross. Right like that. Okay, so from there to there. Easy girls. <laughs> right, so cross to there. So if I can do that independently, then when I'm swimming and I pack it, then when I swim I get really good power transfer over my shoulder. There's another way you can do it. It's actually really hard, though, and most people can't see the yeah, and that's, that's why I bought my little hand wipe too. One of the reasons I bought it in. And it's actually like this. It's an exercise called a kettle arm bell bar. Kettle, kettle, kettle bell arm bar. Um, it's a little bit advanced, but we'll see if we can do it before we do it. So you both knee and both arm up. You roll across, so my body's on its side. I'm mocking it off, the bottom part of it. I lift up, I pack my shoulder. So can you see me pack my shoulder blade like that? Put it over. Right? If you were to knock that, that's the most stable position it's ever going to be in that shoulder. Right, so just the fact that I can actually do that means that when I swim, or when I ride the bike, when I do anything in that holding position, I lock my shoulders off, you can knock me over, but my shoulders are nice and strong and it's a good stable platform from which to work from. Same on this side over here, so arm goes up. So you can do it with a kettlebell, bag of rice, whatever. Right, cross, lift up, and pack my shoulder away. Okay. Right, the last exercise I'm going to leave you with is actually, I reckon, the best one. And I have to work with lots of old people sometimes. And this is the best exercise for old people. Best exercise for young people, best exercise for everybody. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's kind of taking all we just learned then and we're putting it into one exercise that we can do. And it's called a suitcase carry. Right? You can do it with a suitcase. You can do it with anything. You can do it with weights, shopping bag, you can do it, whatever. So, the whole idea of this is, I switch everything on, nice and strong, right? Pack my shoulder blade, nice and strong. Hand goes up to touch this ear. Just remember that I've got really, really out of door ears. No, it's just to take it out of the play. My kids hit tea, even my kids tease me about my ears. There you go. And then I walk, right? Now it looks, I'm making it look so easy too, but like you always just let me say. I oh, know, it looks like I've got a pole on my arm, so that's all right. Okay, so then switch over, other side, and you walk. So I'm not showing you like massive weights, I'm not showing you big you know, exercises you do in the gym, I'm showing you exercises you do at home. But this is not something. Now, the whole purpose of this, this thing is trying to pull me over, right? So I've got to switch on absolutely everything to make this nice and strong and nice and straight. If there's mirrors, do it in front of the mirror if that's what you want to do. But the whole idea is to keep it nice and straight. All right, now, if you want to, have a go. I've got a couple of little bands, I've got this. If you'd like to have a go and you want to ask me about it, have a go at them all. But essentially, the take home message from what I'm trying to show you today is there's lots of little functional exercises that you can do. You can do it at home as a routine. It will make you nice and strong. It will get more out of your training when you do go and swim, bike and run. You get less injuries and you get better results from them as well. And that's basically it. Um, and the only other one we're going, to, we're going to talk about the turbine as well, okay? Because we've brought out a bunch of turbines for you to try. Um, it's about opening it up. So what I was talking about with opening up the thoracic, we 
expanding your breathing. Um, again, this is like another uh, another cueing type of agent is what the turbine is. So it actually it does split your airways. So if you want to go and take it for a run today, try it. You will actually notice a different difference. But I, for me, I find it more because it's actually it's forcing me to think about my breathing a bit more and how I run. And I like it from that perspective because it does that. Whether it has any, it doesn't make your airways more expanded or anything. It just gives you a bit more prompting. It's the prompting kind of like my, that's my little thing with the turbine that I've got down. So, you know, look at that. But any questions about any of the stuff that I just did? All right, so what I did, releasing, so doing a few stretches, setting, like standing up with one leg, switching the core on, bit of shoulder scap stuff, and then doing a few exercises at the bottom. Do what I did here. Any questions? Yes, no? Yes? Any suggestions for um, to improve or ease the static? Sciatic stuff? Yeah, there is. Well, see, the problem with like this painful is, is sorry. Painful when you sit on the floor. Yeah, it is. It is really painful. Um, so the sciatic stuff. Do you, who who are you seeing as at the moment as far as a, a therapist? What sort of stuff are you doing? Um, similar to the stand up. Yeah. And the bent one. Bent leg. Yeah. Yeah, like stretching. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what happens with the hip flexors? They actually go inside inside your pelvis and they actually attach on the back wall here as well. All right? So they actually attach inside your pelvis on, the, on, the, on your spine is where they attach. If you want to look up an anatomy book, it's called the iliac psoas. So the iliacus and your psoas muscle comes through, it's like a sling. All right? And then it goes down and attaches down on your knee. So that is where, through that part of it, is where your sciatic nerve runs. If they're really, really tight, then that's where you get sciatic nerve pain. All right? So it also compresses your lower back as well. So you get, you probably got lower back pain and stiffness. The only other thing that I would also do, if I was, and this is again, would be, that one's really difficult to do, but if you get a tennis ball, and you get up on one knee. We just put, prepared for you earlier. <laughs> you just want to prepare it and actually roll on it, and you'll find a spot. So there's also another little diamond shaped muscle called the piriformis which actually also sits up in there and it's part of a complex there that it causes issues. You can roll on this and if you find a spot that's really tight, you go, okay, I'll sit on that for a little while and wait, wait till it releases. So again, the reason for this is you get a movement pattern because your body just goes, okay, I've just got to do this because I've got to make shit work, right? So I'm just going to do whatever I have to do to make it work. But the problem with that is it kind of learns bad, bad habits. So this being really tight is kind of a bit of a bad habit. So you've got to release it first before you can then go on and switch on your glute muscles. Right? So a lot of physios will actually get you to do, oh, we're going to switch on your glute stabiliser muscles, and so they'll go like this. But the unfortunate thing with doing claims like this is, I don't know any functional, like, what's this useful for? You're going to make me really good at, um, like, oh, hello, boy. <laughs> hello, boy. No, but it doesn't. Like, so at least with this sort of stuff, it's leading to sit to stand, it's leading to this, right? It's functional, right? So it's all about making something functional and actually having a purpose and going somewhere. A bit like what your coaches do with your training. They give you training and strength training because it's got a purpose, it's going somewhere, it's going somewhere, right? So release, when we're talking about the release part, it's this thing, so sitting on, and you spend a fair bit of time doing this. This, and this. It kind of sits about there. Oh, okay. The lower back. It's, it's called the piriformis. Yeah. So it's, it's just, just, it's L5 S, L5 so S1. Sort of, yeah, sorry? A bit to the side. Yeah, kind of, so it sort of sits there like, like that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so just on the top of your glutes, the top part of your glutes, just on that ridge, the iliac ridge you're in there. Okay. So just roll on it. You're also really good for your glutes as well, for rolling the tennis ball like this. And this is again part of that releasing thing that I was talking about. You know, lying back on the ball, releasing, spending a little bit of time doing this. Cool. Does that help you? Right, so I know if you've got a knee, knee pain, it's really hard to do that stretch that I had you do before. The other way to do it is actually up on the table with your leg dangling over. So a bit like. I'm going to kill myself doing this. Right, so I think, imagine a table. Right, see so that's nice and lengthened. And your arm up as well. It's the same sort of principle that I did then. Maybe do the first. Okay. <laughs>
Your piriformis is not tight in everybody. It's only certain people. If you have sore lower back pain or your tightness, all that sort of stuff, you can get. People always have quite tight piriformis. Any other questions? Yeah. Are there any exercises to sort of um, particularly on your neck? Because I find that I get tightness sort of around my neck. Well, when I was talking about with your scap position, that sort of stuff, the reason why people often get really tight through their necks and really tight and sore up there is because they do this all the time because they're going to control their scapula as they do that rather than using that. So if you can actually switch this sort of stuff on, so actually pack your scapula, right, practice it, and actually get like bands and actually squeeze back on it like that. So practice your scap protecting your thoracic region, right, so the muscles that actually do that with your scapula. You work those for the muscles, you get a better result because it means it releases all these, allows these muscles to release off. So these muscles, if that stuff's not working properly, all those little minute postural muscles in your scapula aren't working properly, then these muscles take over because you can't just use your arms. Right? The, you know. So you've got to, so they force this the tuning muscles. Okay, so they move these muscles which are kind of outside their scope of practice and why you get really tight neck as well. So that's often what, what causes it. It's because you're actually not really being able to switch that stuff on properly to hold it nice and back in here. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Any other questions about how, how it works with triathlons and how to fit it all in and all that sort of stuff? Okay. How much do you recommend doing like foam rolling and stretching and stuff? It's depends on the individual. I, like, you've got... Regardless of how busy you think you are as a human being, you always have a little gap of time. Like I always used to have, my, my time to chuck stuff in like this sort of stuff was always in front of the tally after I'd had dinner. Right? So I'd literally be there and I'd be watching a TV program and I'd just roll on the phone while I'd be doing something. So that's the time to. So it's about being mindful of and being conscious and going, well, I'm going to put it there beside the tally. So when I switch the TV on, instead of sitting in the couch like this, which is what I'm trying to stop, right? Couch watching television. I'm actually get on the phone online and actually, yeah, okay, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah or beside your desk at work when you're watching the watching. <laughs> <laughs> so. cool. Any other questions, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Now if you if you've got any questions at all and if you want to if you want a list of exercises and you want to drop me an email, put to Jason at jasonshores.com. Alright? And I can send you some I I got a like a generic exercise list I can but otherwise, think about what you do. Be mindful of, of how you know you can switch stuff on. Use bands, that sort of stuff. You know, monster walks, all that sort of stuff. Do really good. And you know, don't think a bit outside the box. Don't just think swim, bike, run all the time. Think about okay, well, am I going to benefit from doing maybe a PT session outside? Or you know, some lateral movement stuff. Yeah, with someone that actually, you know, thinks no, outside the box. And it's actually, you'd be surprised how it can, you know, it adds how much it can add just by doing even just one session that's outside that single like one session. Again, look, your coaches will talk to you about how important it is to have, you know, specific strength for your riding, so big gear work on the bike and being able to run hills and paddle work when you're swimming and all that sort of stuff. But this is kind of a little bit more setting up for that. And strength is, like I said, strength is the most crucial thing in the control. It's really, really important. It's power transfer of you know, ability to, to be efficient and ability to be injury free as well. Cool. Well, I hope you get something from today and right. um, good luck with the rest of your camp. I hope you don't get too cold tomorrow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Firstly, congratulate, uh, thank uh, Jace for coming in.